Self-awareness. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self-Love Monday. How are you guys doing? This is Ron Simplify Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, the reason I wanted to cover this is because whether it's you who are having these issues or you recognize these issues in someone else, now, if they're your issues, then you can adjust and make the changes. If there's someone else's issues and they're open, then you can offer the suggestions. If they're not open, they should maybe become red flags and things that you need to identify as whether you want to get into a relationship with this person or not. Because as I've said before, if you don't like what you see now, don't get in a relationship with the thought process, I am going to change them. So let's get into this. You guys have heard me talk about uh, one of the things to show your mindset, your thought process to see if you're a positive or negative type person. Because even a person like me who considers myself to be a positive individual, every time that I've done this exercise, I'm like, Ron, you need some work. And by this, the exercise is listen to your thoughts. You can take about a minute, and for most of you, in five to 10 seconds, you're gonna already get your answer. But if it's a positive thought process, then that's a point on the positive side. If it's a negative thought, then we're gonna put that on the negative side. And as we've said before, sometimes, so don't get me wrong when I'm saying what's positive and negative, I just want you to understand your thought process because for some of us, negativity, negative thoughts, I should say, not negativity because we don't want to hang out there, but sometimes negative thoughts is what inspires us to take action. So what the world would consider to be a negative may actually be a positive. And sometimes positives cause us to sit still and not move when we should be moving. So understand that going in, I just want you to understand are most of your thoughts on the positive side or on the negative side, but at the same time, understand both of them can get you results and both of them could actually slow you down. Depends on how you use them. But anyway, so we're gonna add, add the points up. If you go, a thought comes in, you go, was that on the negative? And you go, ooh, that was negative, that's a one. That was positive, that's one, so it's one to one, and you keep doing that. For most people, it's gonna be negative, 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 and it's gonna be probably 10, 15 seconds before they actually come up with a positive thought, and that's why I say for most people, they're gonna be out of the game instantly. They're gonna be like, ooh, I have nothing but negative thoughts going on. Again, if they inspire you to move, use them. But if you're always thinking negative, I doubt if they're inspiring you to move because most people do not, are not inspired to move that live in a negative thought process. So, but I'm just saying, notice the difference and then use them wisely. Um, I was talking to a gentleman, he was telling me, and this is what I'm talking about, become aware of the things that you do or others do. But he was telling me how he told his company, do not put me on the registers because the fact is, I'm a person that will end up putting the customers in check. I'm not going to sit there and, and be polite. He's telling them all these type of things. First off, if you're in a company and they can't put you where they need you, do they need you? Think about that. So if they let him go, most people in his case would be like, it's unfair, it's not right, I can't believe they did that to me. That's the story they will tell. The reality is, you created, that's why I say well, this is the traction part that people don't look at, they think it's some mystical thing. You are attracting that through your thought process and through your conversation by saying what you cannot do, what you, basically his strong thought process is he's committed to he's not, he can't handle people. He's not going to try to handle. He's committed to that thought process. Then I can't use you. You're, you're not, you're not serving what we're going to need in our company. So why should I cater if I need you up front and I can't use you because you dug your feet in? That's a waste of time. So folks, you understand what I just said? That's the same person that you're dating. Think about that. How you do some things, how you do all things. If he's doing that at his job, 
do you think he's doing those things in his relationships with those that are in his path? You better believe it. And if you were getting ready to date him and he already lets you know he's a person that's not willing to adjust, he's telling you this up front. And again, I'm not saying automatically make a person, this is who they are. But start to pay close attention and you'll see in most instances, there's consistency. So like in his case, being that strong person that digs in his feet and not willing to change, it's probably how he runs his life. And if you're going to get in a relationship with him, understand you're going to have a lot of battles. Why? Because he's a person that digs in his feet and he's not open to suggestions. Is that something that you want? Now, if you are that person, then you need to take a closer look at yourself and say, would you want to be in a relationship with somebody like that? Could you imagine being in a relationship with someone who digs their feet in and it's not open? What are the chances of you and that person working out where both of you are two people that dig their feet in and not open to change? So if you recognize that, maybe it's something that you might need to address. Or if it's someone that you're thinking about getting a relationship, I would have a serious thought, some serious thoughts before I step into the relationship. That's why you guys always hear me say, get rid of your problems, not your partner. Sometimes... You get rid of the problems in advance because you see that there are problems and you don't step into it. Does that make sense? Um, now, I was talking, I was hearing this guy, he was talking about himself the whole time. He kept saying, um, one of his friends was saying something about uh, aloe vera, you know, that he had some aloe vera oil or whatever. And he's like, what you doing carrying that? He's like, because it makes my skin so smooth. And he said, look at me, how beautiful I am. And he... So throughout the conversation, he was he was making little things, comments like that. He was talking about this some of this guy's friends. He says, "All your friends like me." He's like, "Why why do they like me?" And he, and he was like, "Well, he said my friends are cool people." He said, "Well, you know why they like me?" He says, "Cause I'm just I'm just a good person. I'm just a good uh, good looking guy. I'm just this. folks. This is that person, and if this is you." that is spending so much time on themselves, you know what that is? Lack of self-confidence. See, the world wants to think that's a person who has a very high self-esteem. No, they don't. They're just the opposite. That's why they keep talking about it, trying to convince themselves that this is real. And they're trying to get you to agree to help them even feel better about themselves. Because see, people that are very confident in who they are and really believe that, don't have to express it. Don't have to say it because they just know. So if that's you, take a closer look and work on that area in your life because guess what? That person will come across in relationships as a person that if you pick up, and this is, and this is again why I'm sharing this, is because if it's you, make the adjustments. But if it's someone else, recognize these things before you get into these relationships. Quit getting into the relationship and then later talking about, I didn't know. They told you in advance. I always tell people relationships are not hard. People are not hard to figure out. If you take your time and actually pay attention, it's the same thing like when we have conversations with each other. Most people never ever have a conversation and those of you if you do it, watch your conversation with the next person that you have or watch other people's conversations. And you'll see people are not conversating. People are talking to hear themselves speak because it's like you say something. I'm just sitting here trying to wait so I can get my piece in or I'll cut you off to get my piece in. But I ain't listening. I'm not paying attention. And if that's you, <laughs> work on that. And if it's someone else. Again, you recognize that in advance, and that's really, again, the purpose of this video. For you to recognize this in advance, you don't have to spend all these time in relationships to figure this stuff out. People are giving you the signals. I'm just going to share a couple of them here. But, folks, if you pay attention, you'll see them. You don't have to wait till you, quote, unquote, heads over heels, and now you're using an excuse. But I love him so much, or I love her so much, I just can't set them free, which is another myth. You can if you just change the stories and the way you see them, you will all of a sudden change the way you feel about them. But anyway, um, I've shared this one before where someone was saying, 
if they haven't had their coffee first thing in the morning, that you don't actually want to be around them. That's not good. If that's you, that's not good. If you know someone like that, that's not good, okay? <laughs> the reason I say that, and this is what I shared with the person that told me that, a person that can change your life by information they could give you or a position they could offer you, an opportunity, they walk into your place of business or wherever it is that you're at, but you haven't had your cup of coffee. So you got this attitude. They're never going to talk to you. They're never even going to consider you as a person that they would want to offer an opportunity to. Again, who attracted that? Who created that? You did. Recognize that and make the adjustments. Again, if it's someone else, offer it to them. If they're open, if they're not, leave them alone. They get to make their own bed. Trust me, they will lie in it. And then they'll blame the world that it's the world's fault because they're not taking responsibility for their actions. When you're out on a date, how are they treating the servers? How are they treating the people that are around them? Their demeanor. If they're very rude to the people that are serving, your turn is coming. Male or female, your turn is coming. People will say, well, they wouldn't do that to me. Yes, they will. And they're going to do it to you. It's not an if, ands, or buts. They're going to. You just at this point haven't crossed that line yet for that side of them to come out. One day it is, and you have to decide on, is that something you want to be able to live with? If you want to try to make that acceptable, that's one of those, like I said, if it's a red flag, why would you try to make that acceptable behavior? And if it's you, <laughs> Maybe you want to work on that. If it's someone, again, if they're open, okay? A person with a short temper. Understand where the short temper comes from. Having to be right. Folks, think about that. They have to be right. That's why they have a short temper. And the temper is for them to try to gain control of the conversation, the control of the situation. And that brings on the anger and all that. And they think, whoo, I'm back in control. And then later they feel bad because they don't like the way they responded to try to take control and they were actually out of control. If that's you. <laughs> but anyway, the short temper thing. Recognize you don't have to be right. And trying to scream and holler. This is where I get those young ladies where I've had them tell me that they need a man to put them in check. No, you don't. If you need, you're an adult. Why would you ever need someone to put you in check? This is a maturity conversation. You're actually crossing a line, which is why a person got to a point where they felt they had to check you, as you call it. Why did you cross that line? Why are you crossing that line? Why would you continue to cross that line? Some people go, well, it's to show that he cared. That don't show he cared because you, you irritated him. You know what I'm saying? You took a person and what happens is you said something that made them cross that cross a line that they didn't like. And depending on the individual, they're going to fire back at you to try to wound you. Then you fire back to try to wound them. And here we go. And that's how people end up in relationships blowing up. And it started off with something silly because someone lost their temper. Because as I've said before, the difference between animals and human beings is we have the ability to stop, pause, think things through. Animals live in a stimulus response world. Things happen, stimulus, they just respond. We as human beings have the ability to pause, which means we have the ability, something happens, stimulus. In between our reaction, we do have the ability to stop, pause, and think it through. Most people don't. If it's you, work on this. If it's a partner, again, Think this through. And again, like I said, the person, the person, the reason for this whole conversation is recognize this stuff up front. You don't have to spend a lot of time with people to see this instantly. They will show you real quick. I don't need to go on 10 dates to figure this out. Um, I remember we were at a uh when I was uh at my in-laws, 
their neighbor across the street, uh, one of the kids would come and park in front of their home. Now, in front of my uh, parents' home, their sidewalk is set up where two cars could fit as long as one pulls all the way up or one pulls all the way back to allow the... But basically, you could put two cars there. This particular individual would come over and park and park right in the middle and take up both spots. Do you think that's a considerate individual? Now, some of you will say, oh, well, they just, you know, they were just parking, you know. Are you being considerate? This is what I'm talking about. Those of you who think that was a good idea might want to check to see if you fall into the category that I'm talking about. You're parking in front of someone else's home. It ain't even your house. It's somebody else's house. You're going to take up both of their spots. Is that considerate? I mean, some people be nervous about parking in front of other people's house. But definitely, I'm going to take it where nobody else can park in front of your house. Including you? No consideration for others. I remember one day I actually put a note on their car and told them, I live here. Don't have a problem with you parking. But move your car up or move your car back. Therefore, I can park my car in front of my own home. And they did. But you know what I'm saying? A lot of times, matter of fact, they would even park in front of someone else's home, which I didn't mind. We were glad. What I would do, I know, I guess it's probably bad, huh? But what I would do, if I was there before them, I'd park back because I don't know if they can't drive. But if I park back, I made sure there was move, uh, room in front where any car could park, not just them, anybody. But they didn't want to back up. Now, I don't know if it's because like, they didn't know how to parallel park or whatever. That could be why they would took it up to two spots. Doesn't matter. Bottom line, still didn't consider it. Um, but I never had, if I parked back, they were always parked somewhere else. Because, again, they didn't want to have to put in their, their car, back it up or whatever. And, again, I don't know if it's because they couldn't parallel or whatever. But I didn't. That's not my concern. My concern, I know some of you probably, see, Ron, that's inconsiderate. That could be considered inconsiderate. It could be. Because I could have moved up and allowed them to move back. I know, that's bad. Practice what you preach. <laughs> but at that particular moment when those things was going on, they a couple of times she didn't listen. So it's kind of like one of those, it's like, okay. I know what to make her where she don't even want to park over here. So, but anyway, that's not good. That was spiteful. That was bad. Okay. Don't practice that one. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but it, well, bottom line, but that to me again shows kind of the characteristics of what we're talking about. People are showing you if they're considerate or not of others. Um, just like you see people that park in, in uh, when you go to, uh, a shopping mall or anything else and they'll park their car and they'll take up two spots. You think they don't know they took up two spots? And if they didn't know, that again shows how considerate they are because they didn't even look when they got out of the car to see where they parked. If you go in, I know some people think, well, Ron, my car is a nice car. I don't want anybody parking next to me. That's okay. I get it. I understand. Your car may be that, that beautiful and it means that much to you. You don't want anybody close to you. That's good. You need to park out in the boonies, away from everybody else. The fastest way to get your, your car keyed or someone wanting to puncture your tires is when you do that. Why? Because they feel like you're very inconsiderate. Even though they may not have gotten a spot, but the fact that you're willing to take up two spots. Some people don't like people that are uh, <laughs> inconsiderate and they will show you how they feel unfortunately sometimes with a key to your car again if that's you check that out make sure you're being considerate again if you don't want to buy near your car you the one that have to park way out not say well if they don't if they don't like they can park way. And that's that's the spots are are there the company didn't put the spots there with the intent of people taking up two spots you're actually in the wrong. I know that might be hard for some of you that do that to believe that, but you're the person in the wrong and you're not being considerate. 
move your car, okay? Um, I saw even uh, today on, on the 4th of July. Now, I went down the street, and you had a lane, you know, one lane on each side, and then, of course, the big lane, the big middle, you know, the passing lane. So you had a passing lane and one lane on each side, so it was a pretty big street. Now, up and down this street, all the neighbors were putting their fireworks in the middle lane. That way, the traffic can go by both ways. Only in one house. The individual put their fireworks right smack in the middle of the lane where you couldn't go down that street. You would have to actually go into the passing lane to go around their fireworks. What do you think? Is that person considerate? The person is only thinking about themselves? And the reason I began bringing these up is because if this is you, take a closer look. And don't be surprised why you're attracting those type of people. Because one of the things that you'll notice is that the things that you dislike about others the most, the things that irritate you the most about people are usually your own personal issues. Take a look at it. The things that make you the maddest about people is usually because it's something that you yourself do. Take a look at those things and make the adjustments. And again, if, the, if someone around you and they're open, you can suggest it. Um, I picked up someone, um, a gentleman and a young lady, and when I dropped, well, first off, they weren't ready. Now, the ride to get to them was about 20 minutes, okay? Folks, 20 minutes, if you ordered a ride, 20 minutes, you know you should be getting your stuff together. That way, when the person get there, we ready to go, right? Get there, they ain't ready to go. At least, I guess I could say he was considerate enough that he saw me instantly. He came and said, hey, give me a minute. I need to go say goodbye. Okay. If he was considerate, he would have already been ready to go. You had a 20-minute window. You knew that the car was coming. You can even see on the uh, app where the car is located. Considerate people. And see, folks, again, I'm just bringing this to your awareness. So if this is you, you can notice these things and make the adjustments. But more importantly, well, I won't say more importantly because it's the same. If you see it in others, you notice these things up front and decide on if this is a relationship you want to get in. Again, don't get in and then play later like you didn't know. People tell you everything you need to know, again, if you pay attention. So we have a five-minute wait for them. You know he used like four minutes and 50 seconds. Is that a considerate person? And I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, just like I'm telling you when people don't automatically judge them and, and automatically say this is who they are just because they have one incident. But I've already pictured, okay, I said, well, that shows me kind of inconsiderate. I mean, it was nice of him to come out, but you had 20 minutes to get it together. You didn't. And then you're going to use up almost the whole five minutes. You know I'm sitting out there, and it took you almost the whole five minutes to actually come out. Okay. Then when I went to drop them off, he jumps out of the car. He's starting to walk all the way to the, to, to the place that they're at. He ain't checked to see if the girl's out of the car. He ain't checked nothing. He just, shoom, gone. I'm not here to tell you what's a man thing, what's a woman thing, all that kind of, That's up to you to decide. But would you consider that? Because some people, I mean, I know um, people that get out of the car and they're at the, like you go to the store, they already at the, at the door, at the store, at the front door before you even get out of your car. They ain't even waited. Get to decide on if you can consider that to be a person that's considered. And again, I know people, well, I don't need to hold their hands or whatever. Make sure I got out. You don't know why I'm not behind you or whatever. But anyway, that's. That's just me. Those are things for me personally, I pick up on. I'm like, wow. They're already up there. It's like they didn't even watch to see if I got out of the car. They don't know. They don't know. I could have fell down or anything. They wouldn't know. They all the way up there. They have no idea because they ain't worried about nothing but themselves or getting into the store or whatever. How, how fast do they need to get in the store? But anyway, we're going to leave that alone. Bottom line is. When he was gone already and she was still trying to get out of the car. I was like, yeah, that's another one I would say very inconsiderate, not making sure that the lady is okay, that she got out of the car, that 
she's all right and he already gone. You don't have to see too much of that for somebody to have shown you. Again, I don't like to say this is who they are because we can all change. But there starts to be some consistency in their behavior. And you get to decide on if it's behavior that you want to be in a relationship with. That's all, again, this conversation is all about. To recognize it if it's things that you do and understand why you might be having challenges in relationships because of what you're putting across. And if it's others, recognizing that in advance to decide if it's a relationship you want to get in. Because if you do, you can't blame anyone else. And then lastly, I want to talk about, I was talking to this young lady. She was talking about, um, she's been in a marriage um, for, with a gentleman for 31 years. But she said, we've gotten to the point where we just, we've accepted each other. That's, again, folks, life to me, life is too short for that to be a conversation. Or a thought process, I should say. We need to address that. That's something she's talking about. Well, I've known him since I was 14 and, you know, and we got kids that are older now. And, you know, our oldest is 31. We've been together for 31 years, you know, that kind of stuff. And But now their relationship is just at a point where they've just accepted each other. That's, that's got to be a, a, a very sad way to, to live your marriage to really be with someone and, and again and this is kind of where people talk about you've become roommates that's okay if, the, if 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 all you want is a roommate but if you want a partner and you want a spouse you want some romance you want some um that side folks we need to we need to work on that again um as you guys know it ain't right it ain't wrong it is my opinion uh, for those of you who haven't had the opportunity, again, my app will probably be out here within the next week or two, and I'll give you guys the information on that as soon as it's out. And then that's going to be the easiest way because you'll be able to download the app from uh, Apple and from uh, Android, and it'll be able to cover everything that I'm up to, which will be beautiful because it'll be easy to say, download my app, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be called A Simpler Life, but don't hold me to it. That's what I'm going to put it in as. We'll see if that flows. But uh, when we get to that point, I'll be able to just tell you to, to, to download that and boom, everything will be right there on your phone, easy access, and you can talk to this crazy guy anytime you want to. <laughs> All right, folks, whatever you guys are doing, make sure you're having fun or you should be doing something else. That last one is exactly kind of what I was talking about. If you ain't having fun in your marriage and you guys are just hanging out, Go, go figure out a way to make this, because again, I'm not a person that pushes divorce. I'd prefer to see people work it out. Um, go try to add that back into your relationship. You shouldn't be in a relationship, especially living in the same house with someone that you're just tolerating, someone you're just putting up with. Life is too short for that. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Again, if these are issues that you have, maybe you want to take a closer look at them. That way you're not having the relationship issues that you're having. Or if you recognize them in people, those are the red flags. Those are the things up front that people are telling you in advance so that later you can't say, oh, I didn't know. You weren't paying attention. All right, talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.